everybody for coming to the Aaron Torres podcast YouTube page. If you could do me a quick favor, see that little subscribe button at the bottom of your screen, go ahead, click that subscribe button really does help our channel grow our audience grow. And I really do appreciate it more than, you know, so click that subscribe button, appreciate your support. Now here's the video that you came here for switch gears. And obviously look, we, 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 we just spent a ton of time talking these uh, conference championship games. I'm so excited for the weekend ahead. But here's the thing about college football in 2023. When the games end on the field, that is when it actually gets very interesting off the field because you know what December in college football means. That is right. It is transfer portal season, baby, in college football. And so it's interesting because technically the portal doesn't open until Monday, a couple days from now after these conference championship games. And so because of it, players aren't really allowed to leave. The only players that are allowed to leave are guys that are either graduate transfers, they can leave whenever they want, or if your coach has left. So if a Texas A&M, those players who obviously their coach Jimbo Fisher was fired, or in the case of like a Duke, their head coach took another job, they're allowed to transfer. So I just bring it all up to say players aren't technically supposed to be in the portal just yet. But at the same time, we have players publicly announcing that they are leaving, thanking their schools, fancy graphics, some of them even doing interviews, even though they're technically not allowed to enter the portal until Monday. So let's just dive in because I do think there have been some mega, mega, mega names that have entered the portal. And really, I thought Thursday was the day, Wednesday into Thursday, when things really started to get crazy. First name. I think, look, the biggest name in the portal is Riley Leonard. We talked about him a little bit on the YouTube channel on Wednesday night. We'll get to him momentarily. But the most interesting name that I would argue that has entered the portal to this point, it is actually UCLA quarterback Dante Moore. For people who don't know the background on him, former five-star, he was a true freshman this past year. So high school class of 2023, number two ranked quarterback in last class behind only Arch Manning. And really, it was just kind of a weird up and down year for him. Really, it was a weird recruitment in general. Was committed to Oregon. Kenny Dillingham leaves. You don't really see UCLA, the type of school that's going to land a five-star in a random circumstance like that. But I do think the opportunity to play early, obviously, with Dorian Thompson Robinson leaving at UCLA, led him to pick UCLA, but now he is leaving. Kind of an interesting year from the Dante Moore perspective because it was really just kind of an up and down kind of situation for him at UCLA. On the one hand, started playing early. He didn't technically start the first game of the year. That was Ethan Garbers. But by the end of the first game, he was playing and then basically took control of that offense for probably about a five, six game stretch in the middle of the year. Wasn't really super effective in the process. 1,600 yards passing, 11 touchdowns, but also nine interceptions. And so late in the year with the offense struggling, Chip Kelly uh, unfortunately had to go back to Ethan Garbers. Then when Ethan Garbers got banged up, they went in another direction, played a third and fourth quarterback. And so even though Dante Moore was super high profile, I, I don't know that this is all that shocking. And really, I was thinking about this with Dante Moore, and we'll get to some other guys here in a minute. Like this is kind of, in my opinion, the gift and the curse of signing these high school elite stars, especially at the quarterback position when only one can play at once. At, at one point, you know, you're excited to have him, all that good stuff. But at the same time, I do think unless it is like an Arch Manning where it is very clear, hey, there's a guy in front of me. I am not coming to play year one. I do think it's that weird thing where they're probably not ready to play, but you have pressure to play them. But then if you play them and they don't play well and you have to go to somebody else, then they're probably going to leave. So it's an impossible situation. But this kid is leaving UCLA. You know, UCLA, I think, will be fine. I know there's a lot of negativity around Chip Kelly right now, but I think they'll ultimately be fine. And what I'll be interested from this kid's perspective, Dante Moore, is what his next move is. Thought it was interesting. He did an interview with 24-7 Sports on Thursday afternoon. Again, not even supposed to be technically in the portal yet, but, but he kind of said, look, I'm not looking for a starting spot or a sp starting opportunity, just a place to be developed. And so that really kind of opens up the door for just about everybody. Uh, but I don't know that I necessarily believe that. I think he's going to go to a place where he's going to have the opportunity to play right away. But bluntly, he's going to have to be better than he was at UCLA because if he isn't, doesn't matter where the school is, There's going, he's not going to be successful. So I wish him luck, no ill will. He did struggle as a freshman. A lot of guys do. But it'll be interesting to see where he ends up. You kind of know the schools that are going to be in the mix for a quarterback. Remember, he was committed to Oregon early in the process. 
Kenny Dillingham leaves, you wonder if Oregon could get back in the mix. A bunch of other schools will need quarterbacks. So keep an eye on Dante Moore. I think you can argue one of the two or three guys that I think will be as highly coveted as anybody this offseason. Let's keep it going with some other interesting names. Another name that entered on Thursday. This one, you don't need to be a diehard college hoops, a college football fan, excuse me, to know this name. Our old buddy, DJ Uwe Laganale. He's back in the portal, baby. That's right. Oh, you thought he was out of eligibility? Think again. We thought he was going to be a three and done at Clemson. Doesn't work out. Goes to Oregon State this past year. Had actually pretty good success. But with Jonathan Smith, the Oregon State coach, leaving for Michigan State, he decides to enter the portal. And let me just say this. This is going to be a very interesting recruitment. Now, what I would say about DJ, look, we kind of know who he is at this point. And even at Oregon State, they'll try to sell you that he was so much better. And I do think it kind of helped Clemson. It kind of helped his kind of reputation, if you will, that Clemson struggled this year. But let's not pretend. He wasn't that great at Oregon State. 21 touchdowns, seven interceptions is good. But the problem that he had at Clemson, completion percentage, that was an issue at Oregon State. Accuracy was a, a, a problem at Oregon State, just 57% completion percentage. So when I look at DJ, I think it's pretty straightforward. I think he's a kid. Go find a place almost like what you did with Oregon State this year, where you don't have to be the star, where there is a balance in run and pass game. Because Oregon State, again, to me, was kind of the perfect spot. They run the ball so much that when you get the opportunity, you don't have to be great. Just don't be terrible. And he was very good for an Oregon State team that ended up 8-4 and four this year. In terms of where he could end up next, you know, two schools seem to have emerged and both kind of make sense. One is Oregon. Uh, it's worth noting, obviously, Oregon will lose Bo Nix at the end of this season. Remember, too, DJ's younger brother, Mateo Uyangalale, is at Oregon. So you wonder if they'll get in the mix. It's also re reported, and I kind of heard this through the grapevine prior to him entering the portal, that Florida State could be a school that is interested in him and he is interested in concurrently. That kind of makes sense because we saw what the Florida State backup and third string quarterback situation looks like post -tra uh, Jordan Travis, who was obviously hurt and out for the year. Florida State was not very good on offense last week against Florida. And so you would assume they'd be in the market for a quarterback this offseason. Those two schools seem to have jumped to the forefront. We will see what happens with DJ Uyghandale. Let's get to the final, what I would argue is very, very, very big name in the transfer portal at the quarterback position. That is Riley Leonard, the quarterback at Duke. And I don't think he carries the name brand of a DJ Uyghandale or even a Dante Moore. But I'm here to tell you, in terms of covet you know the the, the volume the interest and in, and in the amount that he will be coveted Riley Leonard is probably the closest thing that you have to a sure thing in the college football transfer portal right now in 2023 so far it's still very early to be abundantly clear but this was a kid remember two years ago not this past year but the year before this was a kid that led Duke to a nine win season in 2022 by the way we talked about him a little bit on the YouTube channel on I think it was Wednesday night so if this is a little bit repetitive, if you're watching on YouTube, forgive me, but we got to talk about Riley Leonard because he is another new name of very, in, you know, very big note and intrigue that is now in the portal and has been for about 24 hours. Again, led Duke to a nine win season a year ago. And he was the reason why he was the X factor. He was the difference maker for that team. He was a guy that two seasons ago. Now we're still talking about played all 13 games. 2,900 yards passing, 20 touchdowns, six interceptions. And then, oh, by the way, 700 more yards rushing, 13 rushing touchdowns, 33 total touchdowns. That shows you what kind of talent this kid is. Now, the problem, unfortunately, he got banged up this year. Duke started off really well. He was playing great. They beat Clemson. They had Florida State actually down at the half. Then he gets hurt. They lose to Florida State. The next week, he tries to come back at Louisville. They lose to Louisville. And it's just one struggle after the other. And unfortunately, that Louisville game was the last game that he played the entire season. So he gets hurt. He only plays seven games total, finishes with 1,100 yards passing, three passing touchdowns, four rushing touchdowns. And I think it was a pretty smart decision for him to go ahead and decide to transfer rather than enter the NFL draft. If he had been healthy and if he had played like he did in 2022, 
I think there's a situation where he's maybe a late first round, early second round pick, not an NFL draft expert. I rely on the experts who really liked him coming into the year, but he got hurt, clearly doesn't have the best tape. And I think what's important to note here, he is now going to be able to rehab uh, and, and, and get back on the field before he has to go through that draft process, right? You enter the NFL draft now, you're trying to impress your future employers while also rehabbing an injury, get healthy, uh, good, put some good tape out there, lead a team to a bunch of wins, and hopefully you'll be good to go. In terms of Riley Leonard's future, it was interesting when he entered the portal. Uh, and again, he was a player that can enter the portal because his coach left. He put one of those, uh, uh, you know, do not contact. In other words, when you enter the portal, you can enter as a guy and they give you your information and who to reach out to and blah, 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 and this and that. But there are also players that can request do not reach out to me, which seems to indicate that there are already schools that kind of have a pretty good feel or he has a pretty good feel for places he would like to go. The school that was immediately connected to Riley Leonard on Wednesday night, it was Notre Dame. Remember, they lose Sam Hartman this year. They also have a five-star quarterback coming in next year. C.J. Carr, the grandson of the old Michigan coach Lloyd Carr, is coming to, to, to Notre Dame next year. And so I just bring it up because it feels like there's that one-year gap. Come in, plug and play, we'll develop you for the pros, and then you get out, we'll get C.J. Carr in. Notre Dame, of course, had a top-10 defense this year. They always had a good run game. And so if you get Riley Leonard, I think Notre Dame's back into being in that top 10 in that short conversation. Remember, next year's a 12-team college football playoff. You'd feel pretty good about Notre Dame making it with a Riley Leonard, a quarterback. Let's just get to some other quick names uh, that have entered the portal in the last couple of days. Thought this one was really interesting. Juice Wells, South Carolina wide receiver. Another guy like Riley Leonard was banged up this year, had just three catches. But the year before, oh, he was the leading receiver in the SEC. That's right. The leading receiver in the SEC, 928 yards receiving on 68 catches two years ago when Spencer Rattler and him both transferred in. Bring it up. Got banged up this year, has entered the portal as a grad transfer. This kid's going to be as coveted as anybody. I would think if you're an Ohio State, if you're a Texas, if you're a BAM, if you have one of these high profile, high passing attacks, Juice Wells will be a top priority. I would argue right behind Riley Leonard, Maybe a Dante Moore. He's going to be as coveted as anybody. So Juice Wells is in the portal. Also, sad to say, as a UConn fan, one of the few bright spots for UConn this year, Justin Jolie has entered the transfer portal. He's a tight end that had 56 catches uh, over the course of this season. Big athletic kid. Uh, bluntly, when they played uh, a few weeks ago, when they played Tennessee, uh, I think a lot of Tennessee fans came away saying, who is that guy? Eight catches for 69 yards in that game. But he is a guy, he's a high major dude. He's he's a power five dude. Um, you know, in the NIL world, I think it was going to be hard for UConn to keep him anyway. But I don't think that UConn going three and nine helped at all. Um, I'll just be blunt. As a UConn alum, I am not surprised by this news. It's disappointing. You want to keep all your good players, but it's not surprising. Uh, so Justin Jolie is in the transfer portal there. A couple guys we talked about on the YouTube channel earlier in the week, Relique Brown, a former five-star who played at USC the last two years, is in the portal, or he will be when it officially opens next week. He was a kid, really explosive, really talented as a true freshman two years ago, and just kind of got in Lincoln Riley's doghouse, couldn't quite get, get, get touches this year. Two years ago, three touchdowns, 10 yards per reception. This year, just three catches total. Finally, Chris Tyree, Notre Dame's leading wide receiver, is in. Will Howard, by the way, who we talked about earlier this week on the YouTube channel, is also in as well. Led Kansas State to a uh, to a Big 12 title last year. Remember, they played Alabama in the Sugar Bowl. He is a quarterback, a little bit limited athletically, but he does what you need to do. Good veteran quarterback. Uh, he has been linked to a few schools early, including Kentucky, which will obviously have to replace Devin Leary.